Hey guys, Condor here. We're back with some more War Thunder today. Now today, the gameplay that I have for you is actually one that I recorded in a daily event a couple weeks ago. Now, I haven't been uploading lately because my microphone actually broke. I use like a headset mic and the splitter cable that splits the headset and the microphone into the two separate 3.5 millimeter sockets I guess you would call them it actually one of the the microphone cord actually like the rubber like faded away and the wire frayed so I had to get a new cord but it's all fixed now we're all good we're all good but yeah so I recorded this a couple weeks ago maybe maybe one week ago it wasn't that long ago but it was the Guadalcanal event and I decided to fly out the P400 just because it is one of my favorite tier 2 American fighters and it has a really low BR and I just really like the plane. It, it's got a beast climb rate as you can see I got all the way up to like 5k I even out climbed the Japanese. So right off the bat I mean I saw I had an altitude advantage so I decided to dive on the A6M3 once they engaged in a dog fight. Tried to get a shot, I got a spark with the 20 mil so I just pulled up out of the dive last thing I wanted to do is just turn with him because there are like three of them in that area and it would just it would not have been good so I zoomed out of the area I noticed there was actually one zero that still had altitude so I kept my eye on him when I turned around now uh, an important thing to consider throughout this battle is just uh, the fact that the A6M 3s that they're using some of them have a battle rating of I think like 4.3 which is it I mean it's a good plane it deserves to be at that battle rating this plane has a battle rating of 2.7 and as the battle progresses you'll just see how kind of inaccurate the battle ratings really are I mean up against certain enemies so I tried to dive down on this A6M3, but he was pulling up, and I just couldn't pull up in time. So I went after the one below it and managed to set it on fire with the 50 cals, I assume. 20 mil doesn't really set planes on fire. It just kind of takes wings off. It's one of the early Hispano model cannons, so it's got a, a lot of hitting power and a really good muscle velocity. So, I mean, that's what I really like about it. So the first enemy went down. And now there was a uh, a zero on my tail, actually two at the same altitude as me, uh, quite a ways apart, but still right on my tail. Now, I kind of do a lot of running this battle. I mean, I wouldn't call it running, just more like strategically uh, moving myself away from the enemy, because I mean, the only other really option I have is to just uh, turn, which I am not going to do. So. If you saw the scoreboard right there, uh, I am in a very tough situation. It is a 1v5 right now, and I am completely outmatched against the enemy aircraft. Uh, the only real advantage that I have is my speed. Uh, this American's plane is pretty fast. And my armament. I have a 20 mil on the nose, 250 cals, and four 7.7s. So I have a lot of hitting power. That guy did the head on, he avoided it, smart move. If you go head up, heads up with this thing, it is not good, uh, which you will see. Uh, so the other A6M3, I tried to pull with him, couldn't get guns on target. He turned back, and he was really close, so I decided to put my plane into a shallow dive just to make sure that he couldn't you know, get a good shot on me. I dodge a lot of shots right here, just doing a little up-down tactic with the uh, elevator keys just to make sure that they don't connect any shots because even though the uh, the Japanese 20 mils are kind of buggy and they spark a lot uh, they they can also one shot you they're kind of like the seven point the British 7.7s of the 20 mils were like they either one shot you or they spark a lot so I I just the best way is to just avoid getting shot in the first place is you know the technique that I like to use you know just kind of not getting shot to avoid getting shot it's a pretty smart tactic I think you guys should uh, use it whenever you're in a combat situation so, once again, I think these guys just turned around just to make me turn around, which, I mean, it worked, because I did. <laughs> so, as you'll notice, when I go into these heads 
these head-ons, I try to go in below the enemy. It's never good to go into a head-on when you have an altitude advantage on the enemy. I got pretty lucky right there, and I spark like 220 mils. And I didn't get any shots on the enemy right there, just because they were so close together that if I had went, I committed to one, the other one would have gotten me. But this other guy, uh, completely ignoring the tactic that I just mentioned, goes heads up with me, and I have a huge altitude advantage. I get nicked in the wing, but I end up setting his plane on fire. And, yeah, I think that's actually the, uh, that A6M3 is the 4.31. So, I mean, just goes to show, mate, don't mess with the P400. It's a 2.7, but it'll still wreck you. Straight savage. So, I mean, right now, I mean, I've kind of improved my ch Did he put his fire out? He did put his fire out. Okay. So, I kind of improved my chances by wounding one. I think there are still five. Uh, maybe there's four alive. I think one crashes. So, anyways, they turn back again just to try and get me to turn. Which I do because... Oh, yeah, see, he just crashed in the bottom right. Okay. So... They turn around once more, and I head back towards them. Uh, right now, they're actually about 0.5 kilometers away from each other, which gives me a very small window to actually hopefully take one of the enemies out before I come within firing range of the second. And this time, this guy decides to just go, like, straight up heads on. Or actually, no, he doesn't. Oh, and he turns too prematurely, and I turn after him. Well, that was a good move. I didn't realize I did that. God, I'm really good. <laughs> uh, but I end up sparking again, which I was pretty bitter about. So once again, it's back to just the up and down method to make sure that they don't land any shots. Once again, they're spraying with 7.7s. Obviously, they are zeros, so they do have a pretty limited ammo amount, which I use to my advantage by just making them waste as much ammo as they can by just trying to avoid their shots. So, it is down to a 1v4, and one of them is severely crippled, so it's essentially a 1v3, however, there are two zeros on my tail, and they have altitude on me, and my engine is overheating, so it's still not a very ideal position to be in, but they turn around once again to get me to turn back, and what do I do? Of course, I cool my engine, I think? Is that what I do? Yeah, I start cooling my engine. Uh, they actually go out of spotting distance, which is, I take advantage of that, just to cool off my plane, make sure my engine doesn't overheat, because that would have been embarrassing and pathetic. So I'm just checking the runway, because I saw one of them was uh, ground striking, and the A6M2 that I crippled earlier ends up crashing, giving me my second kill, and putting it into a 1v3 situation. So, I... What was I saying earlier? I don't want to... Ooh, they actually dove down. So I, I saw that... So I begin the climb just to get an altitude advantage over the two of them uh, to make sure that they can't dive on me because even though the zeros like aren't that good at diving, I mean they can still dive to around 600 and still survive. So I don't want to put myself in that vulnerable situation just using every moment I can to just gain a little bit of altitude. So I turn back around and they are now actually uh, at very different altitudes, which is better for me, but they're still very similar distances away. Uh, one is about 0.4 in front of the other, and the first one just goes heads up, I dodge him, and then the second one just refuses to back down, and I make quick work of him with the 20 mil. However, I use the last of my 20 mils, and now I'm down to 50 cals and 7.7s. And once again, just trying to avoid shots, just spraying with 7.7, wasn't really that worried. So I pull up and around, uh, he begins to turn, I'm just trying to use uh, the gravity to turn my plane a bit faster whilst not losing that much altitude. Use full rudder right here to just turn the plane around and engage him once again. I do have uh, uh, a decent energy advantage over him right now, so I'm going to use that to my advantage. Uh, once again, he goes heads up, but he turns prematurely, and I managed to turn with him, putting some shots into his plane and setting him on fire. Which, I mean, the Zero is very good at avoiding shots, but the biggest mistake that even I make when going into a head-on and trying to dodge is turning prematurely, because it will absolutely screw.
So, with that, uh, it is a 1v2, and the one is pretty crippled, and the other is actually at equal altitude with me. He, uh, managed to climb while I was engaging the other zero, and he kind of taunts me saying it's dogfight time, but I take that shit personally, so I'm like, real time, I was like, nah, this bitch is going down, I'm a straight wreck him, so I'm just gaining altitude, gaining energy, and, uh, just putting a, a pretty significant distance between me and him, just to make sure that I can turn around safely. So, uh, once I get about 3.3 kilometers away, I begin to turn, and I'm out of 20 mils, but I still have 6 machine guns, which is a pretty deadly armament with 250 cals in the nose. So, once again, I dive down below him, we go into a head-on, once again, he too turns prematurely, and I manage to roll with him and put shots into his plane, setting him on fire. So, uh, now it, both planes are crippled, kind of back-talking him, saying, lol, <laughs> you bloke. <laughs> Apparently, I was pretty salty, must have been the ocean that day, just got to me. And he manages to put the fire out, which is great. Uh, both zeros that I managed to set on fire uh, put the fire out. So it is still a 1v2. I mean, they are both crippled, and I am pretty pretty lightly damaged. I'm not critical at all, so I still have full control over my aircraft. However, there is still two of them and one of me, and they're zeros, and they're terrifying. So I just really want to make sure that this guy do goes down. I assume that the other guy is probably at the enemy airfield, which means by chasing after this guy, I'll probably spot him pretty soon. But uh, this just go goes to show how good the P400's performance really is for the tier that it's at. It can easily dive at, like, as you can see, 660, and I still have full control of my aircraft. Uh, the other A6M3 is actually just taking off from the runway, having prepared. Yeah, I even break 675, and I still have pretty full control. Um, but when I engage this guy, I kind of botch the shots uh, a lot and end up shooting his tail off with, like, my last bullet and then flying in between the gap of, like, the tail and his plane. So that was pretty sexy, I have to say. It was one of the coolest kills I've gotten, partially because I suck. Uh, but the A6M3 goes into head-on. I have so much energy that I'm just having none of it, so I just pull straight up, cause him to stall, and then dive back down using a little bit of flaps in the turn at the peak so I can turn a bit faster. He tries to pull underneath me, but I end up missing, so <laughs> I pull up again and just using that energy to my advantage, just getting out of the area so that AAA. There are a couple cargo ships by the bay which have terrifyingly accurate and deadly AAA. So I just turn away from them. I do still have a pretty good energy advantage even though I burned quite a bit and those turns and those dives. However, he's just circling around the runway just using the AAA advantage to gain altitude. So when he turns, I turn back with him. I do have quite a bit of distance to turn. That's the that's the scariest thing when you're fighting zeros and you just can't turn that fast is they close the distance surprisingly fast. So, I mean, I just I just hate having to turn with them. But once again, he turns prematurely in the head-on, and I managed to put more shots into him and pilot sniping him. And that was my fifth kill of the battle. And I managed to pull off a 1v5 clutch with a plane that was severely outranked, which just goes to show how bogus the battle ratings are in the first place, and that they should just go back to the 20 tier system. I don't know how many times people have mentioned that, but I still think, ugh, I still think it was better than the battle rating system. I mean, the battle rating system is okay, but if you play with the Americans and you're at anything 3.3 and above, up to like 5.0, you just get matched against G2s and A4s, and it's just. It's just not pretty. <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyways, that was the end of the battle. I ended up with five kills. Uh, but I set, um, I set, I think, s six planes on fire. And three times, or two times, they put them out. So, I mean, that, that was great. I mean, I love setting Japanese planes on fire and having them put it out. But I was actually the only person on my team to get a kill. Just showing how shitty... American teams are and how unreliable they are. 
uh, just, you know, checking my stats. It was my first actual battle in the event, surprisingly. My first one, and I pulled that out. I was like, you know, I'm just never going to play this event again. I don't want to jinx myself. That was way too good to be true. So, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this battle uh, with the P400. Great aircraft. Highly recommend it. And uh, this has been the Condor. Oh, let's just see what the battle rating actually is. 4.3. Yeah, see, P400 OP. With that being said, uh, this has been the Condor, and I will see you later.